Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of my LEGO Train Container Terminal. It has been two months since I posted an update and that is because I was busy with uh, recording the uh, huge layout 2018 video. It's already on my main channel, you should check it out. And uh, after that I went on holiday for two weeks. Um, I had to clear the attic from the mess that I made from uh, the 2018 layout video. That is all behind us now and I'm ready to go for the uh, automated container terminal once again. And this will be now my main focus. Yes, I s I've said that like the last time I believe as well. <laughs> then the opportunity came that the living room was free. Uh, at least the, the house was free so I could clear out the living room, blah, blah, blah. Um, for now, I'm gonna really focus on, on the automated container terminal project since I actually wanted to upload it in like October, November at the latest, but honestly, I don't think that I'm able to do that, but we're gonna have a look, we're gonna see how things evolve and uh, I think we uh, we already starting to tackle the uh, the hardest problem and that is the uh, the precision of the, of the system. So, uh, so let's rewind a bit and uh, the problem that we discussed on the last episode uh, was that there was too much friction going on um, when moving the crane. And um, I tried different methods, uh, one motor, two motor, and um, I couldn't get two motors uh, working very well. I don't know, still don't know why, but I had to g let go that, that version. Um, so I was thinking like, okay, I need something that uh, causes less friction because the system that I'm using right now is uh, not good enough for uh, the whole crane to be moved. And then I was like, hey, the new roller coaster, it runs very smoothly. So I was like, I'm going to use that system because then, you know, if I use a track of the, of the roller coaster and put some with the carts on top of it and put the crane on top of that, that would make the crane roll very, very smoothly. And that would eliminate one of the biggest problems, I believe. So I immediately ordered some stuff on Bricklink to check it out. And while these parts were arriving, I was like, but Iron, Lego trains run also very smoothly. If you try a Lego wagon, it runs very smoothly. Why don't you use Lego train tracks and that's it. So um, I think that's a better option since um, I already got the wheels, um, the tracks. These kind of tracks, you know, these are the, uh, the old ones. Yeah, well, these are the new ones, but also the, the, uh, the old ones, the 16 uh, sets long tracks that were used in the 12 volt uh, series. I'm already using that in the current situation. And I got a bunch of them already bought on Bricklink, so I can reuse them. So what I'm gonna do, so what I'm gonna do is gonna fit the, uh, let me just show you. So the wheels that I'm using currently are these which fit nicely between two reels and it moves like this which runs yeah rather smoothly but not smooth enough so when you have a look at the uh, train wagons they run very smoothly and that's what I'm gonna use so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install four of these Lego train wheels beneath every leg of, uh, of the crane and uh, so uh, eight wheels in total. I'm gonna lay down a reel here and a reel there. So um, it will not cost me any extra reels since we got a double one here. And per wheel I can use a single one. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. Next to that, if you have a look at the motor where it's positioned right now, the force of moving the crane is placed on this particular point, which is more or less on the center of one leg. Um, but that gives also a bit of friction when you look at the whole thing of the crane. So it's better to move it as far as possible to the center of the crane. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove this rail over here together with the motor. I'm gonna put it on this side of this leg. Um, that gives me some trouble over here 
since there's a monorail switch here and uh, I don't have enough room to put a, a reel and a, a gear and so on between here so I need to make this gap bigger the last update what I'm gonna do is over here um, I got the bright idea to um, move the whole control unit on the crane itself and by doing so I have far less wires that need to be moved um, but it's too big like now and this is just a, a very temporary uh, solution to check uh, well just check the previous video and uh, you know what I'm talking about so what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna make this uh, control board that you see here two stories high so it'll fit in one leg of the uh, crane so that's what we're gonna do uh, as well so let's get on to it so I made a base unit with four train wheels uh, below it and a uh, drive mechanism the drive mechanism has a little gear on the outer side now and that will go on here this is just proof of concept on my desk so uh, I don't have to sit on the floor all day long I'm not 10 anymore so <laughs> so uh, th this one fits on here of course and as you can see it runs very smoothly um, there's a bit of offset as you can see but it's not very much so I think we can uh, we can deal with that so on top of this there will be the crane here's the other one for the other leg and um, well yeah you can see the status of the crane right now sorry for that that's it so um, come on man focus are you on manual focus ah you're on manual focus here we are um, so I got some uh, work to do and this is the end result of the crane I basically rebuilt the whole crane from scratch um, it kind of looks the same obviously um, but it's a, it's a bit wider and um, it's a bit more sturdy and um, it runs on train wheels now so um, it's completely redesigned and um, and I love it it's better than before so the first thing that I want to show you is that it runs now on train wheels and I can say that the friction problem that I had has been solved completely so I'm gonna show you I'm gonna remove the drive gear here like that and now it's free to move on the train wheels and as you can see look at that isn't that amazing it's like a hot knife cutting through butter it's like I love it so the, the friction problem is completely solved and um, well that's a good thing but obviously um, another problem has occurred and um, I'm going to talk about that later on. Let me just install the drive gear again. All right. So what else is new is that I've, like I said, made a two-story high control board. And by doing so, um, it doesn't take up as much space. It fits nicely in one leg. And I've made a sliding system and I can easily access it by sliding it outward. When this USB connector isn't there, I can easily um, slide it back the whole way so it fits nicely into the uh, leg there's going to be a cable chain over here um, i've ordered some parts for that um, for now <laughs> this is the way to uh, not mess up the cables but um, it's going to be fixed anyway um, but like i said there has been developing another problem and it has to do with let me just fix the camera like that it has to do with the uh, pneumatic system um, I operate the crane at around 45 psi and that's also the power the crane needs to lift a container high enough to um, make it over the uh, structure of the crane that you see here this beam over here and the general thing is that the higher you want to get it the more pressure you need so the higher this grabber goes the more pressure it needs to be kept at that level and so that's a bit of an, uh, an issue because the compressor can't get the 45 psi anymore it reaches 40 and that's it and I narrowed the problem down that it has to do with uh, these pistons that you see over here that actually guide the arm that drive the arm 
I don't know how to solve it. I probably have pushed them too far, I don't know. Maybe I've put too much pressure on them. Maybe it's, uh, it's you know, uh, they've been going up and down for like a few hundred times now. Maybe it's just the mechanical wear. I don't know. Anyway, I'm using these old cylinders that uh, were introduced, I believe, in the late 80s and were used until the mid 90s. And around the beginning of 2000, I believe, Lego has um, issued another type of cylinder, which is the same length as this one, but it doesn't have this, uh, this brick on the lower side. It's just a studless cylinder. And um, I ordered a few of those and, and they're gonna arrive in a few days. And I basically hope that it'll solve the problem. I hope that Lego in that time just didn't change the uh, outsides, but also the insides, like the, the ceilings or stuff like that. And uh, maybe they've made it more, uh, I don't know, robust, uh, something like that. Um, I just ordered them. I don't have them right here. I want to use those because they have the same length as the current ones that I'm using. And by using those, I don't have to rebuild the whole crane. All right, so um, there's a bit of an issue, but I want to move some containers today because it has been a very long time and uh, we're going to actually move two containers from the train to the monorails. I don't know how it will go since the pneumatic system doesn't have enough power. So I think, uh, yeah, well, obviously I already did a, a test run and the first container went well and the second container didn't go well. And that's because the pneumatic system is using more air than the compressor can produce. So that's also an issue that um, I need to upgrade the compressor also, but I, I already knew that that's gonna be a different episode and uh, we're gonna build a huge mega awesome compressor. But for now we're gonna move some containers. So we're gonna make the train arrive and then uh, we're gonna move some containers to the uh, monorail system. Close enough. Yeah, you see, that's the problem. So there you have it. The second container didn't go well because it wasn't high enough. And what I also saw was that it was a bit bouncing back and forth when uh, the crane started moving and while bouncing it was going to the right and it didn't go very well between the supports so that must be something uh, I need to fix as well as well or make more space between supports which I don't like very much so I need to make sure that um, it doesn't bounce that much or or I need to make the yellow unit move before the whole structure moves. So when the container is already between the supports, then it doesn't matter if it bounces a bit because uh, it has nowhere to go. So it's something uh, I should check out. So let's do another try. Pull it up, pull it up, pull up. Ah. Well, that was close. Not entirely correct, but uh, <laughs> close enough, I believe. Um, the yellow one had a bit of uh, the same problems that it had the first time. So I need to fix that. 
So that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Um, I gotta fix the uh, the pneumatics problem first, I believe, and uh, yeah, I hope those new cylinders will uh, will do a good job with that. Otherwise, I need to design a different system for the for the arm, which I do not hope is necessary because it has worked perfectly until now. So I honestly don't see what else could be the problem. Anyway, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Reply to this video if you have any questions or remarks. And I'm gonna continue working on this project. So uh, be sure to check out my uh, work in progress channel regularly since I will be updating this project with uh, new videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.